We're just going to have to wait and see. Goblin Cavalier. Well, that at least tells us the uh, <laughs> the Acid Web Spider is going to be good. And if the Acid Web Spider isn't going to be good, then his Goblin Cavaliers are going to be garbage. So, win-win, right? Obviously, if he uh, opened up with, like, Life Staff right, right there, uh, that would have been pretty tricky. Since that would be a, a lot of damage before the Acid Web Spider could even hit the table. That seems fine by me. Uh, I could make Blight Mamba there, but I'm just going to run out the Rustic uh, to help lock down Iron Mare. Uh, stunt his development a little bit. And then I'll be able to just make Blight Mamba in a little bit. Or if he did uh, whip out like a Dark Steel Axe or something this turn, I can always. Oh! Well, that's fine. It doesn't. Uh, I'm not too sure how many uh, things it would hit. Presumably, that means he's got some good artifact guy in his hand that he doesn't want to get nailed. Uh, hopefully, I'm not gonna not gonna uh, make this island because he doesn't know what second color I have. I'm just gonna run out Black Mamba and as I was about to say, hopefully shut down his uh, whole offensive plan. What with his offense being a Goblin Cavalier. I guess he could make bladed pinions, which would be pretty difficult for Blatant Mamba to overcome. Uh, on the other hand, that would be just perfect for uh, Acid Web Spider. Oh, Bloodshot Trainee. That doesn't actually kill anything of mine right now, and almost guarantees he's going to make an equipment. Uh, Hopefully he is not going to make a dark steel axe. As I say, not to attack there because I I'm not really in a position to race him, and if I'm going to be doing some attacking, then might as well have Ikerclaw murder. Of course, I, I'm opening myself up to him playing the equipment and then equipping and then killing my Kirkholmer this turn. But that's not a huge deal. He doesn't seem to have a way to get past, so... I'm going to crack this now, even though I'm obviously opening myself up to Galvanic Blast and uh, nailing my Blight Mamba. That's fine, I really want to draw some cards. I have enough forest, so I might as well get an island. So I can play like Disperse and Bonds of Quicksilver in the same turn. If need be. Here's a nice Silvok replica. Well, time to start getting in with this guy. I could play uh, Silvok replica, but there's nothing really I want to kill with it. And I'd much rather keep that to avoid the uh, Bloodshot Trainee killing him. I mean, obviously, he could uh, kill the replica, then I would respond by killing an Iron Mare. But I don't really care about killing an Iron Mare, he's got loads of mana. I'd much rather kill, like, a Mirror Battlesphere or a Steel Hellkite or something that he might play afterwards. I will. I don't have a good reason to keep uh, lands back in my hand either. I already, I have plenty of uh, cards. Some of them re require a reasonable uh, mana investment. I mean, depending on how afraid my opponent is of untamed might, he might start blocking. He can always triple block. No, this is fine. He's uh, afraid already because he didn't want to take an untamed mate for six, which is quite interesting in itself because it 
tells us that he doesn't have like dispensed justice or a, a galvanic blast. So presumably he would have used a galvanic blast earlier on Blight Mamba when I uh, tapped low. But I am perfectly content to just let him uh, throw guys in front of Ukaklum or while I try and draw something to. Well, just make my deck a little bit better. Even if he does make uh, Dark Steel Axe and equips it to the Bloodshot Trainee, that's not the end of the world either, because I can Bonds of Quicksilver his Bloodshot Trainee. This is quite a lot of lands. That's fine, I'm going to draw spells any second now. Oh, Fulgent Distraction. Man, what a beating that was. Um, I, I'm actually going to play of a Replica this time. I don't want to take millions of damage in the, the turn that I don't have Light Mamba. I mean, it's possible that uh, like if he, he plays like an artifact, um, and he could try and uh, go all in on Ferrovore at some point, which is the perfect card to have uh, Disperse against. Pilgrim Distraction isn't really a card that you tend to want in your decks. It doesn't really contribute to plans. I mean, Blinding Beam is uh, awesome in original Meridian. But that was because then not only did you get to stop them from attacking. Oh. Not only did you stop them from attacking for a turn, you got to smack them and then they couldn't attack it again and then you got to attack them again. Infiltration lens. Okay, that's uh, perfectly alright. If he equips, that means I can uh, disperse his fervor and he won't be able to replay it, which is quite nice. Uh, I mean, I don't really want to take 10. 10 is a lot. So I get to bounce his fervor, take 5, uh, spider his cavalier. I mean, I guess I could drop to. I, could, I guess I could drop to seven. That doesn't seem like that bad. Because that's the way Spider does hold off his guys pretty well, and then I still have to disperse in hand for if he makes another piece of equipment. I can bounce the web spider. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll take it like a man. Because so uh, he's got no cards left. Seven's pretty high. He's nowhere near. See, like metal crafting and double blasting me out, for example. I just get to ding him with the uh, Icar Claw Mirror again. You know, I could go in with the uh, Blake Mamba as well, but he's basically. I don't want to lose to like Panic Spell Bomb, Panic Spell Bomb or something like that. So, there's no point in taking needless amounts of damage at this point. I mean, 7's a fine total to be on. Razor Hippogriff, that's a pretty good one off the top. Uh, he's possibly going to get Infiltration Lens back again. Yeah. Hopefully he'll play it right away so I can disperse my spider at the end of turn here and promptly uh, kill his lens again. That's the way spider is also instantly really good against random thief flyers, so I mean I could also wait to do this. 
like on my turn, but there's no there's no reason to. Uh, I'm doing that deliberately now, rather than waiting till after I attack, because I actually want him to trade off his Ikerklomer. Uh, trade off his guys for my Ikerklomer, since I just drew Corpsker. If I didn't want him to block with, like, a Razor Hippogriff or something, like, I, I by showing him the spider and, and that I've played it and everything, and that he doesn't have any equipment, he knows his Razor Hippogriff's not going to get in. So he might have been more tempted to block the Ikerklomer to just trade it off with his uh, Razor Hippogriff. Obviously, it was. It's kind of 50 50 50, 50 whether he blocks. Uh, anyway, I mean, maybe my own logic was used against me there because his previous behaviour indicated that he was willing to block early uh, with a bunch of mana untapped. But I guess he already knew I was uh, playing Acid Red Spider. But uh, what I'm saying is he he'd be less likely to. If he does think I've got a pump spell, he might think, "Well, there's no point in playing around it anymore." If I was just attacking normally, but if I tap down low, then you know, if he chucked a bunch of guys in front of uh, Kuklomer, then it's not like I can pump my Mer to giant size. So he would definitely be able to kill it if he if he wanted to kill it. So. This is like a really roundabout way of saying that every single turn you've got to reevaluate how what your game plan is and how your uh, how important each card is for your plan. Because, you know, from one turn you might want to keep something alive, then next turn you might want to trade it off. Uh so on, you know, there's there's no there's no set hard and fast rules of you always want to have this card alive, or you oh, you always want to trade off this for this. Because there's def there's been times where I've you know chucked multiple good cards in the way of one less good creature, just because it's what I've needed to happen. Like I needed, I really needed something to to die, and then my opponent. You know, they really can't resist the lure of trading what appears to be their less good cards for my better cards. So if you make your opponent think that they're doing what they want to do, you usually uh, get away with more things. Like here, I'm, I'm gonna, even though my uh, Fallen's probably just gonna run straight into Gavalier, that's fine. I mean, my, it's not like my uh, Teldralad Fallen's gonna get through any easier in the next couple of turns, because I don't have any ways to get rid of his Gavalier in order to make it trade more efficiently. So, uh, and by, well, maybe not. See, he's he keeps giving more information with every turn because he might have been like equipment light and only running Gavalier because his deck was bad but it seems to me that he's really hoping he's he's really planning on getting a first strikey Gavalier out in order to fend off my hordes because a first strikey Gavalier still probably isn't going to get past Acid Wave Spider Uh, and a simple high powered one isn't going to get past Blight Mama. So he's got to have like Bladed Pinions or something along those lines or some other sort of really good rare uh, artifact equipment. Well, of course it's an artifact equipment, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 